Hello, everybody. Today, we have the pleasure to have Paweł Mazurek from International Center for Theory of Quantum Information, ICTQT. No, or maybe I Technologies. <laughs> Technologies, okay, in Gdańsk. Right, right, right. So Paweł is a postdoc there. Uh, he, uh, he specializes in uh, thermodynamics and quantum information theory. And do I remember well that you did PhD also? Uh, in Gdańsk, yes. Also mm -hmm. in Gdańsk. With yes, in Gdańsk. Gdańsk. Right? Uh, I, or with Paweł? I, yes. With Paul or Michal? With Michal? No, just with Paweł. Yeah, okay, with Paweł. And, but, mm -hmm. So then you uh, switch and now you work, uh, okay, among other people with Michal. Yes, now I switch to thermodynamics. Yes, but uh, on my personal request, instead of talking about thermodynamics, or maybe there is some thermodynamics hidden in this, uh, Paweł will be talking about connections between quantum correcting codes and other states. I briefly checked the abstract before the talk and there will be something about ADS-CFT duality also. Right, uh, so it's... Uh, so I will mention a connection uh, to the ADS-CFT yeah. duality, uh, but mostly it's about quantum error correction codes and uh, perfect tensors, uh, net perfect, perfect tensor networks. Mm -hmm. Cool, Pavel. So it's great to have you here. The screen is yours. Okay, thank you very much for the, for the invitation. Um, uh, yes, so this is mostly about, uh, about quantum error, uh, error correction codes uh, and these codes are defined on surfaces uh, that have negative curvature or can be defined with the help of the surfaces that have negative curvature. Um, pictures like I was, uh, we, were, we were playing just before the seminar started. Um, and this work uh, was, I had the pleasure to do it with, with Matej Farkas, who is also here, uh, Andrzej Grudka, Michał Chorzewski, and Michał Studziński. Um, and yes, yeah, so this is one of these, these stylings. Uh, so we have a disk, uh, and then you divide this disk into, into tiles. Uh, and the rule for generating these tiles is that uh, you take uh, segments of a circle, a, circumfer a circumference here, and then each of the segment, it has to cross the global circumference uh, at the degree of, uh, of mm, 90 degrees. Uh, and then the circles inside, if they, if they intersect in the, in the bulk, of the disk, uh, they have to intersect with uh, um, with constant angles as well. So here it is 60, 60 degrees, I believe. Uh, but you can generate different tilings uh, if you allow for um, four, five, or six uh, lines to cross at a specific point. Uh, and tilings like this are going to be our our skeleton, our frame. Uh, based on this. Uh, we will construct uh, um, quantum states or quantum error correction codes. Uh, and the way how we are going to do it, uh, we are going to treat every tile in this tiling as a um, quantum state, uh, such that w uh, when you have hexagons here, and in this case, uh, every, every, pen every um, figure has uh, six edges, Every edge corresponds to a quantum system of dimension D. Let's fix attention to qubits. So then every tile is giving you a six qubit state. Uh, and when two tiles are sharing the same edge, it means uh, that some measurement was performed uh, on a pair uh, of qubits, one coming from this state and one coming from this state. So then we will perform all of the measurements inside this, uh, this collection of six qubit states. And what we will arrive with at the end is going to be some, um, some entangled states here between the pairs inside, because we are going to project on a single state, and uh, also some qubits that were not measured in any way and that are on the boundary of this disk. Uh, and uh, 
the, the whole point of this seminar is that when you select these basic bricks, these quantum states, uh, in a particular way, then doing this measurement with this geometry on the boundary of this disk, you are obtaining a quantum state with quite, with quite interesting properties. And these properties um, are about entanglement uh, of this state on the boundary. And this is the, the connection to ADS CFT. Uh, mainly here in respect to uh, quantum states, uh, the, um, the property uh, would be uh, that if we uh, uh, divide the state on the boundary onto two, uh, two regions, uh, one, let's say, I think I can write here, yes. one would be here on this area of the boundary, and the other one would be here. And then you, we can ask uh, about the, the entanglement between these two, uh, two um, parts of the, of the state. Uh, and the property that we are interested in obtaining uh, is that the entropy of the reduce, if this is part A and this is part B, that the uh, entropy of the reduced state uh, 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 the state reduced to the region A, it is going to be proportional to the length of, uh, of uh, some um, line, such that this line starts or connects points that separate region A and B, so this point and this point, and this line goes inside uh, the bulk. And this entropy, of the state is going to be proportional to the length of the shortest line inside the bulk uh, that connect the uh, the uh, edges uh, the points that uh, areas A and B uh, meet. So this is uh, this is connected to uh, this is a, basically a toy model for ADS CFT uh, because in um, ADS uh, CFT isomorphism, you have this property known as Ryuta Kayanagi formula. Uh, and it is about the connection uh, between uh, anti deceter space, which is uh, anti deceter space, this is this ADS, uh, and this is just the interior of the, of the disk. Uh, and this is where uh, uh, gravity theories are defined in this d plus one dimension. Uh, and now the isomorphism is about uh, mapping of properties uh, of the interior of the bulk to the boundary. And here on the boundary, uh, uh, you have conformal feed uh, theories uh, with um, some observables defined. So then the property of this mapping uh, is that when you select, uh, uh, when you have a state on the boundary, uh, then its uh, entropy is going to be proportional uh, to the uh, geodesic uh, in the, uh, the uh, anti-deceiter space. Um, and um, this, this is one of the motivations uh, for um, constructing such quantum networks uh, that I described just before, such as it, it really reproduces the, uh, some of the properties uh, uh, that characterize uh, ADS-CFT isomorphism. Okay, so that's the general introduction. Um, I mentioned that we are going to use a specific, uh, um, specific structures, specific states to be our basic building blocks in this geometry. And this, uh, these states, uh, they are going to be absolutely maximally entangled states. Uh, here I'm giving you three equivalent definitions of those. Um, we fix our attention to uh, n systems uh, from 1 to n, each with the dimension d, though it's not necessary, but just for simplicity, let's assume this. Uh, and then at the state that is maximally entangled with respect to certain partition has the property that when you uh, trace out the Mm, remainder of the system when the partition is A versus B, uh, then when you trace out the remainder, you are obtaining the maximally um, mixed state. 
And of course, it is equivalent to stating that the entropy of this, of this state is maximal and is in fact proportional to the number of elements uh, in, the, uh, in the smaller region when B is, is smaller here. Also, you can show that this is equivalent to the following structure of the, of the state. Uh, so you are summing over... Oh, just a yes? very uh, simple question. So this, this first equation, uh, so is there like, do you do some conventions for the partial trace or is it like uh, you, you don't care about the normalization or this IB denotes maximally mixed state? Uh, I mean, maximally mixed state, yes. Okay, so this is just the, uh, the convention. It's yes, yes, this sure. is just the convention. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, thanks. Uh, so, the, in point three, you have the form of this state, uh, and uh, it's important uh, such that uh, here you just sum up over vectors uh, in the space of the uh, region B. And here, in the region A, you have some, some vectors as well uh, with the property such that all of them, uh, they are mutually orthogonal. Uh, and this is all equivalent to each other. Uh, and this is the definition of maximally entangled state with, the, uh, uh, with respect to specific cut A and B. Now, if such, such properties are satisfied with respect to any possible cut in the state, uh, such that uh, B is not bigger than the half of the, uh, of the number of systems, then such a state is called absolutely maximally entangled state because it, it doesn't rely on the, on the separation into A and B. Uh, yes, I didn't mention, please interrupt me at any moment if, if something is not clear. Uh, so that's the definition. Uh, and these are the examples. Uh, so, for example, when you oh, start... Sorry. Mm -hmm. I have an objection. You have to swap tracing out n minus k systems for the k uniformity. Since usually k is assumed to be smaller than n half. Ah, k, k minus n, yes. Mm -hmm. So you just have to swap to trace out n minus k. No, you trace out n minus k and then on the remaining k, you have a maximum mixed state. So we're saying n minus k, uh, of n, and then on k, you have maximally. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Sorry for this. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's raised up n minus k. Mm -hmm. OK. Uh, so these are the examples of states that are uh, maximal, absolutely maximally entangled. Uh, for example, for two qubits, uh, is just a single state. Uh, for three qubits, you can uh, continue with this construction based on GHZ state, and then this, is, this guy is also maximally entangled. Uh, but then if you, if you try to follow this construction for a GHZ state, uh, and you, uh, you, you are checking this condition, uh, if the, if, uh, what happens when you trace out over third and fourth qubit, then actually you are obtaining an operator that is not proportional to identity. Uh, and uh, so this is, it's not trivial uh, to, to construct absolutely maximally entangled states. And in fact, in case for four qubits, it was shown in, in 2000 that it is not possible to construct absolutely uh, maximally entangled state. Uh, and it was relying on a simple observation that when you um, mm, represent this state uh, in, the, uh, in the computational basis by this kind of uh, mm, tensor, and then the condition for the state to be maximally entangled or on every cut, uh, it is equivalent uh, for um, the unitaries that you form out of the, of the tensor uh, to be equal. And this is just not possible to be, to be satisfied. Um, surprisingly, when you increase number of qubits more to five and six, then you can construct absolutely maximally entangled states. And at first it was done just numerically uh, by um, maximizing the value of this function 
which was which is just uh, uh, the sum uh, over all possible uh, bipartitions. Uh, and here, each of this element is the measure of mixedness of uh, of the reduced state. So these states exist for four qubits. There are no absolutely maximally integral states, but for five and six, they are. Uh, and then you can show that when you increase the number of qubits, then there are no, again uh, no absolutely maximally entangled uh, states. Uh, some of the constructions uh, of absolutely maximally entangled states can be based on the um, combinatorial designs, and these are these uh, two, uh, two papers. Uh, and in general, uh, Felix Huber and Nikolai Viderka, they are uh, online holding a, a, a database of the states that will tell you uh, if for given dimensionality of the system and for given number of, um, of subsystems, uh, if the uh, absolutely maximally entangled state exists and what is its structure. Uh, Okay, uh, and here are, here are the basic properties of the uh, absolutely maximally entangled states. Uh, you can use them for quantum secret sharing schemes. Uh, for example, and here the task would be that you have a, a, a secret, an information, uh, encoded in the quantum state S here. Uh, and you can encode it uh, into uh, maximally, uh, absolutely maximally entangled state in the same, uh, in the following, uh, in the following way. Uh, so uh, you are taking this AMA state uh, and you are uh, encoding the AI, so this, uh, into the code word. Uh, that is uh, the result of the projection of the whole state uh, into the one QDIT here. And that's the form of the state that you are uh, that you are obtaining. Uh, this is the first two lines are just read on the slide before. And now, uh, if you allow for a joint unitary between all the parties on A here, which is a uh, majority of the parties, then you can uh, rotate the state. Uh, into the uh, into this product form, uh, and you, you know that this is always always possible because this state uh, psi from the property of max of maximally entangled states they are always orthogonal to each other. So you can always uh, find such a unitary that uh, mm, that returns uh, the state in this product form, and then for the initial uh, information. Uh, can be encoded uh, on one of the subsystems uh, AI here. Also, you can you can see that uh, when you perform this joint unitary operation on the whole subsystem A, you are creating uh, entangled pairs between A and B because you are starting with this uh, B two was in a state K two, and the same uh, will be true for. Uh, A2. So uh, you can think also about this unitary as some global operation on A that opens uh, the communication channel between B and A because then this entangled pairs between A2, B2, A3, B3, etc. can be used for teleportation. But this opening of a channel is only possible when all of the parties in A cooperate to perform this global unitary. Uh, but the basic properties of uh, absolutely maximally uh, entangled. Can I yes? ask something here? So yes. This, uh, okay, I, as far as I understand, like the, okay, so there, there was, that is just like a question, uh, yeah, what this protocol is all about. So what is in the end the, the feature? So you encoded the state and in what sense it's a secret sharing? Scheme? Uh, uh, in a sense that uh, the um, so this encoding is done on the B part of the yeah. of the system, and then the secret sharing is that you uh, the task is that the uh, A parties if they collaborate with each other, 
then uh, they can extract full information about the state i. And if not all of them co co uh, collaborate, then they have no information about the state that was encoded. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, so, so, this, so, mm -hmm. so, do I understand well that this encoding, uh, this encoding uh, is also like efficient, like can be done efficiently, like you, yeah, do, do I understand well that you have this state which is unknown, like this S, mm -hmm. and your task is to, like, what do you do, like, you have this AMA state, and what do you do then? So yeah. uh, yes, I, under, I understand that you uh, perform uh, yes that you perform a measurement between the um, the state that you want to encode your secret uh, and the qubit that uh, uh, is one uh, um, that belongs to this absolutely maximally entangled state. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, yeah, so that was one of the property, but the basic one that we are interested in is the connection between uh, uh, absolutely maximally entangled states and perfect tensors. So a perfect tensor, uh, in general, a map, let's, let's have a map, T, uh, and it's mapping vectors from um, Hilbert space HB, for example, B, to Hilbert space HA. Uh, and this mapping T is just given by a tensor. T, A, B. And if you want this map to be an isometry, so if you want uh, for um, products between uh, inputs uh, to be preserved as outputs, so if you want to maintain the distinguishability of inputs, uh, then uh, this property has to be satisfied. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, you can uh, treat this uh, tensor elements, TAB, as a coefficients in the basis representation of some quantum state. And now, if you demand that this quantum state, psi, is maximally mixed, you just calculate trace A and the, the state, uh, and here you demand that it is maximally mixed, uh, then this equation here, it is equi equivalent, of course, it is basically the demand uh, that this is satisfied, which is exactly the condition for the map to be an isometry. Uh, so here the, uh, the conclusion is that when you have a tensor um, uh, of, of some coefficients, uh, it can either serve as an isometry when you think about it as a map, or when it gives you a representation in some basis, it's uh, gives you a, a maximally entangled state. And now, when this state uh, is maximally entangled on every cut, uh, then you have an isometry here, uh, a map that is an isometry, uh, regardless which, uh, mm, which elements, which indexes you choose as inputs and which you choose as outputs. So it would preserve the distinguishability between inputs uh, regardless uh, which uh, which entries you choose uh, and such an uh, such a map such a uh, such a map is called a perfect tensor um, so we here we are with the uh, with the um, hyperbolic surface again uh, because here um, we are going to have this absolutely maximally entangled states. Uh, as I said, each, uh, each um, edge, it corresponds to a qubit. And now we know that this qubit, uh, it can be tr um, treated as a map. For example, uh, you can treat it as a map. Uh, uh, let's fix attention to this one. You can treat it as a map uh, that is mapping this input to this for output. And therefore, uh, if you uh, contract uh, the uh, absolutely maximally entangled... So, four or five uh, outputs? So this is five outputs. Okay. I have... Uh, yeah. Yes. One, you two, said four, three, I just want to... four. Sorry, excuse me. Uh, five outputs. Mm -hmm. 
uh, so uh, by contracting this absolutely maximally entangled states, we are expecting uh, to have uh, the, um, we can think about it uh, as a contraction uh, of isometries. Uh, I can have the uh, first isometry here, uh, and then it's, it, give, it has some output that serves as inputs to another isometry, and then this uh, can be concat concatenated uh, further. And in this particular setting, uh, it can be shown uh, that the state that you, which you obtain at the end here, on the boundary, has an entropy uh, that is proportional to this cut. And this, this proof is so simple that I will show you on two slides. Uh, the proof is the following. Uh, you have the uh, separation of the state on the boundary onto region A and region AC. By the way, the, the proof is coming from the paper of, of uh, Bostowski from 2015. Uh, and here uh, you have your, uh, your geodesic that connects uh, the points on the, on the edge that separate A and B. And now uh, the state on the boundary in region A, it is just expressed in, in this basis A, the summation is over A, and uh, it depends on the uh, input state I to the isometry P. So here you just have uh, an action of the isometry uh, on the input I. And the same holds for the state on the, uh, on the AC uh, part, so here. And now the total state on the boundary, uh, it is just the sum uh, over all possible states uh, on, uh, along, this, along this path. So we have a summation over, uh, over I. This is the result of, this, of, of the contraction. So you can represent this uh, as a, a sum uh, over states on the region A and region A, C. Uh, and here, when you want to calculate the uh, partial trace uh, to have a description of the state on, in the region A, you just arrive in, with the following uh, um, for, uh, formula. And you see uh, that uh, this state has an uh, entropy that is maximized, uh, that is upper bounded uh, by the number of elements here over which you are summing, this i. And this number of elements, uh, is, it is just uh, to have the full basis representation of this state, uh, you have uh, lambda uh, qubits. When lambda is just the number of, uh, of these contracted legs that this line was crossing. So the entropy is just upper bounded by the logarithm of this, which is proportional to, uh, to the length of the, of the uh, line inside. But now, uh, if you assume that this mapping, this Q, is an isometry, then you know that the outputs of the isometry, they are distinguishable, they are orthogonal. Uh, and therefore, you know that for this case, the, uh, this bound for entropy is just saturated and you have maximal entropy that is proportional to the, uh, to the length in the interior of the bulk. But to have this, uh, you have to satisfy the condition that this P uh, or this Q, depending on if you are interested in uh, um, row A or row B, that they are isometries. Uh, and maybe I should add here uh, that we started uh, from a building blocks uh, of absolutely maximally entangled states that were isometries, but if you contract one isometry into another, it's not guaranteed that such contractions will be isometries on their own. So uh, we need this uh, specific um, geometry uh, of negative curvature uh, to guarantee that uh, this uh, building blocks of isometries can be contracted in a way such that at the end 
we obtain uh, the isometries P and Q after the, the contraction. Uh, are there any questions regarding to this? Um, can, I, uh, can I ask something still? Mm -hmm. So, what, but what can you prove if you uh, don't have this guarantee that uh, the contraction, that a contraction of those isometries uh, is still isometry? Uh, do you have just an upper bound? The, the upper bound probably still holds. Or yes. So, when this is not an isometry, then you are just uh, obtaining entropy that is lower than this. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. And actually, thank you for asking this because um, uh, we, it can be said that we are interested in calculating the values of the entropy uh, when this is not an isometry. Uh, or we can ask what's the deviation from this bound uh, when, the, uh, when not all of the contract, contractions uh, in the interior, in the bulk, are, are made in the optimal way. Uh, so, in general, in order to calculate this entropy, uh, you would have to track how these isometries are contracted with each other, and at the end of the boundary, uh, you, are, you are able to calculate the uh, form of this state. But this state is on many qubits. Uh, so then to be able to characterize the entanglement properties of the state on many qubits, uh, we we needed some some tool some simplified description of the state, and therefore uh, we were interested in the state on the boundary uh, that um, uh, can be described using stabilizer formalism. So uh, to to uh, to recap this, we were interested in absolutely maximally entangled states here uh, that themselves have the description in the stabilizer formalism. And then we learned how to uh, concatenate the states using uh, stabilizer formalism. And from this, we, we just obtained quite simple descriptions of the state on the boundary. And then knowing the um, stabilizer formalism description of the state of the boundary, we were able to easily calculate the entanglement. So it was somehow addressing uh, the issue of how much the the entropy on the boundary can be can deviate from the bound when you have some irregularities inside when you do not have isometries inside. Okay. Uh, thanks. <laughs> uh, does it answer your question? Um, more than enough. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, so um, yes, and the last property before we go to stabilizer formalism. Uh, is that this absolutely maximally entangled state, uh, they can be uh, treated, uh, they can serve as the basis for uh, uh, quantum error correction codes. Uh, this is the same form that we were using before. We just uh, projected the state uh, onto the uh, I state of, the, of, of one of the qubits, th that was B1 here, and this is what is left. Uh, so now because this uh, these guys here on the system A are orthogonal to each other, then you know that even if you have some uh, erasure um, errors and you somehow lost information about this part of the system, so you lose information about the whole B part of your system, then you can still distinguish between the code words of your code, just making measurements on the A part of the system. So you can forget uh, uh, when the state of the code is the absolutely maximally entangled, then you can lose up to half, uh, in fact, less than half, uh, than, uh, less than half of the amount of cube deeds, and then you can still uh, recover the, the information. Okay, so I mentioned uh, stabilizer formalism, uh, and this is a quick, uh, I hope, um, introduction to it, because our, our methods are based uh, on stabilizer formalism. Uh, so it is all about a description of, of quantum states in the efficient way. Some states can have this description and some, some do not, but as many absolutely maximally entangled states have this description, then we, we just um, decided to use this language. Uh, 
and the language is the following. You have a state, uh, and then you, it is characterized, the state, uh, by the group uh, of, uh, uh, by the abelian group uh, of operators, uh, such that uh, for each of these operators, the state is an eigenstate with the eigenvalue plus one. Uh, this is an abelian uh, group, so all of the elements of the group commute. Uh, and um, yes, this is a very easy structure uh, to uh, describe quantum error correction, uh, because you know uh, that when you will be uh, performing measurements uh, of the state using the uh, the operators from this group, you'll be measuring these operators, uh, then you should be obtaining all the time value plus one without disturbing the state. But whenever you measure something that does not commute with, the, uh, with all elements of the stabilizer group, uh, then you can, uh, uh, sorry, uh, you always measure the operators that commute, but when you, uh, um, obtain something that was not plus one, then it means uh, that there was some error that happened to the state. And whenever this error was anti-commuting with the stabilizer that you were measuring, then measurement of the stabilizer is detecting the presence of this, of this error. The most uh, famous, I think, example of the stabilizer, stabilizer error correction code is the Kitaev code on the, on the surface. Uh, so here, you have a, collect, a collection of qubits, each of the dots is a qubit, and your stabilizer uh, is a collection of operators such that uh, when you have a, a cell, a plaquette, uh, you measure Z, uh, a product of Z operators on the edges of this plaquette, and then also you have the star operators, the measurement of X operators on the, on the end of, of, the, of, the, of the star. And then you can see that this is a, stabi a proper stabilizer group because all of the uh, operators commute as they, ma all of them, they meet on two qubits. So this guy will be acting on this two by ZZ and this guy will be acting on this two by XX. So this is um, the, uh, now I, this is the, even number of, um, of uh, qubits that are acted upon uh, by anti-commuting operators, so uh, it all commutes. And other pairs of, this, uh, of the stabilizers, they, they do not even act on the same qubits, so they commute as well. Uh, and now when you take into account the number of qubits in this structure uh, and the number of stabilizers generated by this geometry, uh, you can calculate the degrees of freedom of your uh, um, of your logical space of the of the quantum error correction codes. So for this particular setting, you have a space for one logical qubit, and this logical qubit uh, is characterized. Uh, this logical space uh, is defined by. Um, so the transformations within this logical space, uh, they it can be uh, described by logical operators. And these logical operators have this property that they also commute with all of the stabilizers here, uh, but uh, they cannot be constructed um, as a product of them. Uh, so for example, here, if you, if you imagine a, a line an operator that acts that acts along this green line by operators X, uh, then you see that this this operator it commutes with all of the stabilizer because again it either acts um, with them um, interacts with them trivially or you have the same situation that two X's uh, um, commute with two Z's uh, and you have also a uh, operator uh, of Z, that is a line of Z, uh, that is connecting the bottom from the, uh, with, the, with the upper part of the picture. And this guy, it commutes with all of the stabilizers that are local, but it anti-commutes with this line because there's, just, there's always one qubit uh, that they 
intersect that they uh, that they act on non-trivially together. So we have this uh, this structure of logical operators that commute with all of the stabilizer group that defines the code space, uh, but they anti-commute uh, with each other in the same way as for a single qubit x and z uh, were anti-commuting with each other. Here you just have the encoded version of this of these operators. Uh, so. Um, just before we go to the absolutely maximally entangled state description, uh, a very simple intuition of what happens when you perform measurements on the stabilizer states. When you start with a stabilizer state, uh, then you know that this property is satisfied for, uh, for every member of the stabilizer group. And then doing a unitary evolution of the state, uh, it is just equivalent to um, unitarily rotating each of the stabilizers. Uh, but so that was the evolution and how it is with the measurement, how the um, stabilizer group changes when you perform some measurement on the state. Uh, there are three cases. The first case is that when you have a state stabilized by these two, and by Z1 I mean the operator that the Z operator that acts on the first qubit. So for example, Z1 is this one, Z times identity, and minus Z2 is the operator that acts on the second qubit, so it's minus one Z. And then if you measure something that uh, can be expressed as a product of the stabilizers, and then the list of stabilizers does not change. On the other hand, if you measure something that cannot be expressed as a product of generators, but this thing commutes with all of the uh, uh, of the generators or all of the members of the stabilizer group. Uh, then you just append this uh, operator that you measured to the list of stabilizers with the sign corresponding to the outcome of the measurement. And then the third case is that when you measure something that cannot be constructed as a product of stabilizers in the group. And this thing, it's at least one of the elements uh, of, the, of the generator um, list of the stabilizer group. Uh, then you just replace, uh, uh, so for example, this X3, it is not commuting, uh, it's anti commuting with this Z2, Z3, because they meet on the third qubit. And also, it does not commute with, with this um, generator. So then you measure it, you have some outcome, plus one or minus one. Uh, and then you uh, update the list of stabilizers of the generators of the stabilizer state with the respective sign here. Uh, and uh, you erase the, uh, one of the operators that was anti-commuting with X3. And the other one, this one, you replace with the product uh, of its own and the one that, that you removed. And this is because you know that if X3 was anti-commuting with this guy and this guy, then if you multiply both of them, this and this, you obtain something that actually commutes with X3. So this is why we, uh, we uh, this is how we do the update of the, uh, of the um, list of generators of the stabilizer group. And uh, this is showing how you can use the stabilizer description uh, to have a um, maybe more useful intuition uh, about how they are connected with, uh, with isometries, with, with codes. For example, uh, this is a particular example of absolutely maximally entangled state. It is defined on six qubits. So here you have one, two, three, four, five, and uh, six qubits, uh, sorry, the so five and six qubit is here. And this is the form of the state. Uh, and you can Okay, there is some technical yeah. problem. Uh, believe me or check. Uh, uh, yes. You froze for like uh, fifteen seconds. So oh we, we couldn't hear you or uh, okay, so, uh, but it was on this slide already. 
Yes, yes. Okay, so it's just uh, saying that here you have the um, uh, absolutely maximally entangled state on six qubits, uh, and here you have the basis representation, and here you have the uh, stabilizers that stabilize the state. And now uh, we are wondering how uh, we can describe uh, the, um, the, the map emerging from this absolutely maximally entangled state in the stabilizer formalism. And the, the intuition is the following. You, stand, you start with the list of stabilizers here, and then you append some, some ancilla here. And let's say that you want to teleport the state of this ancilla on the seventh qubit to the, uh, to the, uh, to the sixth qubit. So you will be performing measurements x6, x7, and later z6, z7 on this state. Okay? Uh, so when you perform the measurement of uh, x6, x7... Hello, I have a question. Yes? Uh, so you have... So this, this system has six qubits, and you have six stabilizers. Means that... Yes. The, the coding space is of dimension, I mean, just one, right? Zero. It encodes zero qubits, just it's a one yes. dimensional space. Yes, it is. So this is not a code. One dimensional it's, space, right? Okay. Uh, even zero. So no information right. can be encoded. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, so here, when you uh, when we measure this operator x six x seven, then using the rules that that I just told you, we we need to update this list, and this x six and x seven it anti commutes only with this last operator here, so we just replace it with the um, with the um, operator that we measured with value plus or minus one. It does not matter. And then if we measure the, uh, another pair, such that we, pro uh, we project this pair uh, into a singlet state, then this guy, it uh, anti-commutes with this thing. So then this goes into, into this. And here, we end up with the following structure. So at the end, after these measurements are done, uh, we, still have, we, we still have a state of seven qubits. Now the qubits six and seven are projected into a single state uh, and are disentangled from the qubits one to five. And these other qubits one to five, uh, here already you have only four stabilizers here. And here you have a structure of, uh, of uh, logical operators that act uh, on this uh, two-dimensional logical space. Because you have five qubits, you have just four stabilizers, and therefore you have this one, uh, uh, you have this degree of freedom. Uh, so this is the, the idea for the manipulation, how you can basically guess what um, codes can be generated when you just start from a state. So what is the, uh, what is the, what is the map that can be figured out just when you look at the, uh, at the generators of the stabilizer group. Uh, this I will skip. Uh, and... Uh, uh, just, uh, so this, this code is just this, uh, this last five qubits, the five qubits that are left, this is the code. Yes, the, the code is the five qubits that are left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yes, and... Um, this we can really skip. Uh, you can uh, we can also continue with this, uh, and you can um, try to encode two qubits into the AMS state in the same way. You add two uh, two ancillas, uh, like one extra state here and one extra state here, and you project this into the singlet x x z z and here x x z z, and then you end up with a state that has just two stabilizers, uh, and it has um, two pairs of logical operators. So this is the way how we can figure out the structure of the, of the stabilizer code, starting from the um, stabilizer absolutely maximally entangled state. Wait, wait, wait. That was a bit of a leap, uh, I think, sorry for that. Okay. Because you have, uh, like, 
Right. So, 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 uh, can you go a bit slower through through this? So, like this, mm -hmm. uh, like yes. how this thing that you're describing previously fits in this uh, picture of multiple inputs and multiple outputs. Uh, it fits in this way that here I just turned one of the uh, of the uh, Q did of the absolutely maximally entangled state into input, and I did it by adding an ancilla and measuring this uh, this qubit, uh, projecting it into a singlet state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here I did it the same thing with another one with this Z five. I added another. Okay. One. So of course, as a result, uh, the least, the final least of the stabilizer state, it is now one pair of the singlet state on six and seven, one pair on five and whatever, eight, etc. And at the end, you are getting more and more uh, truncated list of stabilizers but bigger and bigger list of logical operators that emerge from those operators that were just uh, removed for, from the stabilizer list. Thanks. And this is what I, what I meant uh, here, that you can have, you can turn it into, uh, into a code that um, encodes two inputs into four outputs, or a quite trivial code that encodes three inputs into three outputs. And you can generate the list of the um, logical operators, and uh, so that was just the intuition. We so, Paolo, have... just uh, for the you have roughly let's say ten minutes. Exactly. So I was going to say that as this was the intuition, uh, believe me that we also have a formal proof, uh, but I will not show you this one in uh, in details. Uh, so, um, but the conclusion from this uh, is that. When we start from this um, network, from this geometry uh, of negative curvature, we fill it uh, with um, absolutely maximally entangled states that have a stabilizer description. When we do uh, the projection uh, of the state of the qubits inside uh, into a singlet state, then using these principles, we can easily have a description of a state of a of a, of a qubit that is on the boundary in the stabilizer form. So we just have a list of stabilizers uh, that characterize this. Also, uh, we do not necessarily need uh, to contract all of the qubits inside. So this is maybe I, I think I briefly mentioned. So this is this modification. You can have some. Uh, you can be left with some uncontracted qubits here, and in this way, uh, at the end, here on the boundary, uh, you you are having uh, uh, something that is uh, dependent uh, on the values of these qubits that are not contracted. So this can be uh, understand. Uh, uh, it can be thought of as about quantum error correction code that encodes these elements from the bulk that were not contracted into the, uh, into the boundary. Uh, and using the, uh, the tools that I have not proved to you, but uh, that rely on this int intuition that I mentioned, uh, we are able to figure out uh, what is the stabilizer group for the case when we start from this uh, Yes, from a state like this, uh, with each block being a, um, six qubit absolutely maximally entangled uh, here, and also this inputs, this red inputs, this red dots, there are uh, six of them, and we, uh, we assume that they are absolutely maximally entangled as well with each other. So then at the end, at the boundary, the boundary is stabilized stabilized by the set of 20 stabilizers for this uh, particular set. And there are also 20 qubits, so everything is, uh, is fine. And then uh, when you have a list of the stabilizers, you can very easily calculate the entanglement between parts uh, A and B. For example, uh, if you uh, have um, the part A here and part B here, and B runs from qubit one to qubit 12, so it's from one to 
12, so this is B and this is A. In order to calculate the entanglement between parties A and B, you just have to count the minimal number of generators on, of this list that act non-trivially on both A and B. Uh, and this is uh, the intuition that even relies on the singlet state. You have the singlet state stabilized by XX and ZZ. Uh, so you see that uh, here you cannot reduce this list and you, ha you always have the maximal number of um, generators that act on both sides. And here this acting on both sides, it's, it's somehow the measure of uh, entanglement. And this was shown in, in, this, in this work in 2004. Uh, so um, we have an algorithm for generating this minimal number of, uh, of generators that act on both sides. And therefore we can calculate, uh, uh, we can calculate the entropy uh, on the particular cat. And here are the results. So depending on the uh, entanglement between the inputs, uh, we have different uh, values of entropy. Here I have this SB parameter, and this SB goes from 1 to 20, which basically means that I was starting with the cut 1 versus the rest, then uh, 1 and 2 versus the rest, etc., etc. So we have all possible, maybe not all possible cuts, but at least some cuts uh, on, this, on this plot. And then if the uh, input states here, these red ones, are uh, product states, uh, then the uh, entropy here is always minimal uh, with respect to other input states. But if there is some entanglement between these inputs, then uh, mm, this um, entropy is higher. And it's always maximized by the state that on its input itself is absolutely maximally entangled. Uh, we have taken into account many states here uh, with different entanglement structure when it comes to the, to the inputs. Uh, and uh, you can, uh, now you can uh, enlarge this network and see how this entanglement properties um, function uh, on a larger, larger settings as well. And we have a conjecture uh, that actually when you have this absolutely maximally entangled states as an input uh, to, the, to the code here, uh, then you have a correction to the, um, to the analog to Ryuta Kayanagi formula. And this, this correction, I will skip the proof, but this correction is the following. So the Ryuta Kayanaki was, was telling you that the entropy is just bounded by the, uh, by the logarithm the, of local dimension times the length of the, of the shortest path in the interior. Here, when you have entanglement between the inputs of the code, you also have this, uh, this correction that takes into account this entanglement structure. Uh, and this bound uh, is saturated by absolutely maximally entangled uh, states. It cannot be saturated if the input is not absolutely maximally entangled. And not for all possible, uh, not for all possible cats. Uh, and uh, yes, so this is the, um, somehow the, the modification. Uh, that applies not only to the states but also to the to the codes. Uh, and ending uh, in one minute, I can uh, add that um, you you can also ask what are the entanglement pro properties of the of the networks like this when you do not uh, divide the regions on the boundary uh, uh, into the into compact subregions. Uh, because here the A and B, they were all compact. But now if you, uh, if you define A that is only here and here and here, then the shortest cut uh, inside connecting the, uh, the ends uh, of, the, of the sets A, it can look like this. Uh, but for this geometry, when you construct a, a tensor network using absolutely maximally entangled states, with this geometry, uh, you do not recover, um, uh, you doesn't have to recover the Ryuta-Kayanagi formula. 
So one can wonder what are the corrections, uh, what are the uh, entropic properties of, of states uh, that are defined in this non-compact way. Uh, uh, and again, what are the corrections coming from the entanglement between inputs when you consider this, this structure as um, quantum error correction code. Uh, and the most global approach um, on which we are working on now with uh, Mate and Adam Burkhardt uh, is what are the properties of these um, tilings uh, that would enable us uh, to connect the uh, entropy properties on the, of the state on the boundary with the, uh, with the interior of the bulk. Um, so what are the properties of the geometry that uh, enable us to have some mm, precise formulas uh, of how the entropy on the, on the boundary relates to the, uh, to the interior? Um, yes, that would be it. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, thank you, Pana, for a very nice talk. Uh, yeah, you made it right on time. Uh, yeah, we have time for questions, comments to the speaker now. So it seems as if, uh, uh, you know, so these are some, uh, so you start with an A and E, and then afterwards you start cutting off what do you say? You start uh, taking measurements of ancillary qubits with some choice of qubit inside the interior, and then you start what do you say? Weeding out, peeling off the you know, and creating logical qubits, and you finally end up at the boundary. Is that yes? The basic, that's the basic sort of summary of it, right? Uh huh. Yes. Uh huh. Okay. So, so this. Okay. So, firstly, like the first picture that I saw, it reminded me of like these codes. Uh, which are known as hyperbolic uh, surface codes. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have you heard of that? I mean, like, uh, is there like a direct connection between them, or uh, is that like somehow different? Because the first image that you had, you know, yes, uh, the first image of your slide that looks very much like you know the the image that is shown on the description for hyperbolic uh, surface codes. Mm -hmm. So this is um, so I guess they have to be um, based on hyperbolic tiling, but I. I don't know if this is if this is exactly the structure, or if there is some difference. But maybe someone in the audience knows. I don't know. Oh, okay. I think it's probably different because I Sorry, think what? I think these surface codes are kind of different because. Oh, Mata, you're very quiet. <laughs> One second. How about now? Oh, it's very yes. good. Now you're allowed. That's uh, great. That's all I wanted. Uh, so I think it's different. I think in the surface code, they have a uh, describe like a stabilizer code on kind of a tiling like the one we have on the slide now, similar to the to the Kitayev code. And I don't really see how our structure would be because for us. If you think about this concatenation as a code, then all the sort of input qubits are in the bulk and the code itself lives on the boundary. And I think in the surface, like a hyperbolic surface code, I think that the code lives in the whole bulk. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think you are, you are correct. All right. Okay. Thanks. More questions to Pablo? Um, maybe adding to Marty's remark, when you have these surface codes, you're just associating your stabilizer elements with the tiling, and you don't have these connections kind of uh, between them. Since in this kind of concatenation scheme, you still have on top some perfect tensor or some other code that you are kind of concatenating along the tiling. 
while in the surface code picture I said you directly translate the tiling into stabilizer elements. Right, right, yeah. Thank you. So there's not the direct connection. So what I wrote in the chat, uh, but I saw that Pavel had skipped the slides. E effectively, you can go to this picture of stabilizer codes, mm -hmm. which is something that is not, uh, so, sorry, graph codes. Yes. The, the, the large kind of community was just jumping on graph states, but the original paper, which was one of the other, no, it's only the Schlingemann paper, but the Schlingemann Werner paper, which started everything, was actually about codes in first place. And a state is just a specific kind of instance of a code which does not encode any information. And if you go to that picture, kind of you can trade whether you consider a node in your graph state as an input or as an output. And that gives you kind of a, a simple description how you can play this game in terms of starting with the six qubit graph state, which corresponds to the pentagon connected to a central node. And then you just, either if you take just the central node as an input qubit, then you will get the five qubit code encoding a single qubit. But then if you additionally treat some of the, in, of the other kind of qubits, not as an output, but as an input node, then you get to this picture of these other codes that are used in this tiling scheme. And also the link that I posted in the chat, uh, that is when we studied how the concatenation can be phrased in terms of the graphical picture. Personally, I have to admit, I have some reservation to use the graphical picture instead of a stabilizer picture or even kind of a description in terms of classical codes. But that's my personal preference, that was my background. Mm -hmm. So maybe uh, adding to what Marcus said, uh, we were um, in, the, in the formal proof, uh, we were relying on this representation uh, of the stabilizer state in the, in the graph form, uh, graph state form. So we can always obtain this through local unitaries. That's, do not affect the property of uh, the um, entanglement properties. Uh, and therefore, you start with some state that has some list of stabilizers like this. And then by multiplying them with each other, uh, my final point is that, was that you always end up with such a list. Uh, and here uh, you have uh, um, area of the stabilizers of the state and you always end up with the, a nice structure of logical operators and you know that z log anti commutes with x log uh, and all of the properties of the um, stabilizer or correction code are satisfied based on this can i ask something else Pavel? Uh, okay um, right, so uh, so you like the stabilizer formalism allows you to go to like sizes up to twenty, as far as I remember, right? Yes, but, but is, we. Mm -hmm. But is there like uh, do you expect how those things will behave like if you scale like when you have large like more and more layers? How would how it will become behave asymptotically? Um. So we, I, I didn't try to go higher, but only because um, we needed this to get some intuition. But we didn't face any numerical challenges. Calculating this was just a click. Um, but I didn't, um, I didn't estimate how how the um, complexity grows with the number of qubits. Well, I, I meant and like uh, I meant the uh, entanglement properties. Right. Uh, the entanglement properties. Uh, uh, so I think that the, the results would be just more smooth uh, because at the end uh, we were, uh, I was showing you uh, this, this graph, uh, um, this thing, 
and this uh, this changes were because uh, here this uh, this edge of the structure uh, is really crude it's not continuous but when you when you uh, increase number of the um, of the tensors that are just close to the boundary then you will just get a i don't know more beautiful shape more continuous shape i uh, already here we uh, we see we understand why these values are such because we know that these values are saturating the bound that uh, that we had derived uh, so um, for this purposes, this number of qubits 20 was enough. Uh, but um, so I don't expect anything uh, more than this if you increase the uh, number of, of layers of this concatenation. Maybe uh, you can, uh, maybe increasing number of layers, it also enables you to uh, have uh, more uh, states as inputs with different um, uh, entanglement properties, uh, and therefore this can be somehow um, these properties can lead to different um, properties of the entanglement on the boundary. Right. Uh, so one more question. So you you use this. Uh, I mean, it was essential that you use stabilizer formalism to keep track of this concatenation process. So uh, as far as I understood, right. Uh, yeah, so uh, I think it, it, it's it's the uh, it was very useful for us to have a stabilizer description uh, of the state of the boundary to calculate entanglements, and uh, as we were, it was just uh, easy for us to do it in a stabilizer language to generate this description in a stabilizer language, and then just playing with so, the uh, um, isometries. Yeah. But it can be done as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, I guess like just from computational perspective, like it's important that you have uh, something that corresponds to like you have efficient classical model for everything, right? Yes, for exactly. Properties. So, mm -hmm. like following up on this a bit, like like is do people know if like concatenation of I don't know, like you have other sub theories of quantum mechanics that are easy to simulate, like match gates or like some fermionic. Uh, fermionic structures, right? Fermionic linear optics. So, did people think <laughs> of like constructing, I don't know, AMA states in, or this kind of gadgets in uh, using this other formalism other than the stabilizer one? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a good point. I, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Can I go back to the previous? So. No, the slide. The slide was good. The previous question, I meant. Ah, question. Okay. About like the the, the size and the scaling. So I mm -hmm. think, like computationally, there's probably not. It's probably not a big challenge to to consider like bigger networks. Um, I'm not sure how much we can say about asymptotics using our techniques. I don't really. I think we haven't really thought of that. Like how to actually get some even like a bound on scaling of the entanglement. And another thing is that like, if you look at this specific graph, this uses a state, a qubit state, uh, like a six qubit state as an input, right? And as you start increasing your network, as Pavel said, you get more inputs. If you stick with qubits, you will not have an AMA state anymore because there are no AMA states for seven, eight, nine, so on qubits. So I guess um, you will not, be able to kind of produce this kind of uh, graph because you just want, there's no way to get an AMA state as an input. Uh, yes, uh, yes, but uh, also our, our methods, so we can have a stabilized description of any state with the local dimension being prime of, uh, like the power of prime. So then. Mm -hmm. oh, yes, so if you want to keep like the AMA input, if you want to study that, then you will have to increase the dimension. The local dimension. Yes, I agree with my co-author, so we will not quarrel publicly. Okay, last chance to ask something to our speaker and his co-authors or co-author. Okay, if there are no more questions, let's thank Pavel again. Thanks for sharing your time and for the wonderful thank talk. You. Thank you very much. Thanks everybody and yeah, see you next week. Yeah. Cheers. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.